Well, it's Friday, as you all know what that means. Not only we're going to be reviewing AEW Rampage, as you know, we're also getting closer and closer to the brand new show, AEW Collision, but that's for another later time. However, we got some very interesting matches on AEW Rampage we're definitely going to be talking about. And of course, we're going to see who levels up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up. However, across... Also on Friday, across the Pacific, we have, of course, Choco Pro with their latest show, celebrating Masahiro Takanashi's 20 year anniversary since his debut as a pro wrestler. We're going to see what's exciting. So his main challenge is against Shuji Ishikawa from All Japan Pro Wrestling. So this is going to be a big challenge. And also we got for our news updates, more updates on the brand new all women's promotion that will be debuting in October. And of course, we got some other information. One of them is Braun Breaker, where he discussed a little bit of the actions that took place back in WrestleCon with his dad, if you guys remember that. And we got plenty other things to talk about. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted WrestleZone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So let's begin with Choco Pro. Now there's no numbers in this one. We're celebrating here the 20th anniversary of Masahiro Takanashi since he debuted. Yes, folks, he actually, um, he was along, he was one of the first wrestlers that, of course, if you guys remember, when Got to Move was created, uh, is where she met, of course, Emi Sakura. So basically, Masahiro Takanashi runs the day-to-day -day operations in Choco Pro and Got to Move, but he goes through Emi Sakura while she's staying here in the States. So we're all celebrating, of course, his 20th anniversary. Now, of course, the opening of the show we have Chiko Shikawa give uh, some announcements, matches are taking place. Masahiro Takanashi said that he will continue celebrating his 20th anniversary in the next Got To Move show that will take place at some other point. Um, I know they'll be doing a show in um, in the UK very soon, so that will already have been set. Um, also something else, we had the agent of Uma Army. Aruna uh, Mayako making her presence. I don't know what exactly she said. But however, other great news. In the upcoming Got to Move show, the new trainee, Nonoka, has announced that she'll be making her first official debut. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Wait a minute. Didn't she already made appearances? No. Those are exhibition matches. She's not wearing uh, wrestling gear until she get uh, gets it. Now, this is the same kind of thing that happened with Mia Yatsuba recently, but now... We're going to see Nonoka making her way. So we'll be talking about that at some other point. Now, our first official match for this particular uh, event, we have Sayaka Obihiro versus uh, the Big Apple Mei Shuruga versus Bambi. Now, I think some of you are trying to say, who the hell is Bambi? Well, uh, from my information, Bambi is a freelance wrestler, uh, 45 years old. She's been with various promotions, working with them in many times, uh, Oz Academy, uh, PPP to uh, Tokyo, Colego Pro Wrestling, wherever, anywhere in Japan. So this is her, I think this is her first debut being in Choco Pro. So this is a very interesting thing. However, Bambi is a big girl in this particular match. So this is going to take a lot of effort for both Obihiro and Suruga to try to dodge or try to pick up a win. But what was smart is that they managed to take her outside the through the window just for Obihiro and, Ma and Mei Shuruga to pick up the win. 
but it was Meshruga who was able to pick up the win when Obihiro applied a roll-up, and then she reversed it into a bridge, and it was over right for there, giving her the victory. Now our next match, we have tag team action, Balinaki teaming up with Ken Oka, who's not doing the Meshruga persona. Uh, he, they take on uh, Tonom Sakoba and Takashi Sazaki from Pro Wrestling Freedom. So this is a very interesting matchup. I, this was a very hard hitting match no matter what. I know Ken Oka has been dealing with many of these wrestlers before, but in this case, it was, of course, a sharpshooter by Sazaki, who put it on Balin Aki to force him to tap out. So that kind of sets it in. However, our main event, of course, is the birthday boy, Masahiro Takanashi, taking on Sushi Ishikawa. I have to say, Ishikawa really put up a brutality match against Masahiro Takanashi. Now, Takanashi is a bit more of a clever wrestler to look ways to overcome and try to outrun obstacles against his opponents but this time he's not getting that done in this particular match but however it was a big knee strike by Ishikawa to Masahiro Takanashi to pick up the win now for our Junkin tournament this was a very interesting one normally when we see Junkin tournament certain wrestlers who are outside they rarely they pick up their first win on where it tries and of course the bring the May Balian they were out until we got to Masahiro Takanashi and Takashi Sazaki. Of course, Sazaki picked up the win and he won the piece of chocolate. But he gave his half to Masahiro. I was like saying, happy birthday. <laughs> so that sort of thing. But I have to say it was a pretty good show. I can't wait to see when it's the next Got to Move show. But we do have the collaboration they have with Eve and other places. So I think that's pretty much it for this particular show. I believe it's time for AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. As you know, we're still in D.C. in this particular event. Um, it starts out with the United Empire, mostly with Will Ospreay, Kyle Fletcher, and Jeff Cobb taking on the members of Chaos, more specifically Rocky Romero, Trent Beretta, and Chuck Taylor. Now, keep in mind, this is a very interesting matchup. Now, if you guys remember the Chaos history, Will Ospreay used to be a member of Chaos until he turned his back on them when he betrayed Kaguchika Okada. And I'm sure Rocky hasn't forgotten the betrayal. So basically he talked about if Osprey was determined to have his own unit, he would have gotten Okada's blessing. But no, basically his jealousy towards him took a toll on him. But however, there was some great moments in this match, of course. We all know how you know Empire has always written. But however, we all know one primary mission that Will Osprey has is to get to Kenny Omega and take back the IWGP United States title that he lost to him back in January in, at Wrestle Kingdom. But however, you know this is a direct message to Kenny when he applied the Hidden Blade on Rocky and won the match. Our next match, we had Tail Valkyrie versus Trisha Dora. Now, in this particular match, you can tell that Tail Valkyrie is a bit more frustrated how things have turned out for her. Now, keep in mind, since she made her debut with AEW, she had one goal in mind, and that goal is to dethrone Jade Cargill and to obtain the TBS title. But however, because that wasn't the case anymore, we all saw what happened after double, at Double or Nothing. Jade Cargill issued an open challenge. Chris Statlander returns and, of course, won the title. However, you can tell that Trisha Dora, I mean, um, Tail Valkyrie, my bad, is frustrated over that. So she applied the curb stomp, allowing herself to win. However, during an interview, she did talk about that. And Chris Statlander is no fool. She knows that she's been watching her, that Taya has been watching her the entire time. So she tells her, I can put this title anytime, any place, anywhere. So basically, that's the case. Now, I don't know when will that happen. But however, to me, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't be surprised if this ma if this title match takes place during their Canadian tour. Remember, AEW will be doing tours in Canada until then. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. So if it is, then it would be a perfect setting. Now, 
uh, we do see a little interview with the Hardys. Now, keep in mind, the Hardys has been recently made, uh, uh, made uh, uh, decided to do one last uh, tag team title run, which is to obtain the AEW World Tag Team titles. However, it appears that the Ass Boys, the Guns, Colton and Austin, who are claiming that they are the current best tag team. They think that guys like the Hardys have no business being there. And when they mentioned tag team titles, they felt, ah, 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 it's not going to happen. But however, the Hardy Boys want to make these guys, they want to make to embarrass the, uh, the Az Boys once and all this coming Wednesday. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Now our next match, we have a, tri a mixed trio tag team match. We have... Of course, the Dick Wads, as I call them, Jay, White, Jay Lethal, Karen, and Jeff Jarrett, along with that that hose bag, Sanjay Dutt, and the brainless idiot, uh, Satnam Singh, to take on Papa Briscoe, Aubrey Edwards, and Mark Briscoe. Now, this whole match began ever since, you know, uh, the Dick Wads were trying to take advantage of Mark Briscoe. Even Papa Briscoe told them, don't trust them. And then, of course, we all saw what happened in Double or Nothing. The Karen Jarrett was whacked in the head by... Karen Jarrett whacked Aubrey Edwards with the guitar. And, of course, Aubrey Edwards hasn't forgotten it. So this was a good match. However, I figured that this match was going to be a very interesting one. I knew that Karen's like, I don't want no piece of you, Aubrey. So she ran like a coward. However, Jay Lethal's biggest mistake, he didn't think that Aubrey Edwards has the guts to whack him with the guitar. Which it did. But it was Aubrey Edwards with the figure four that put Karen Jett away to tap out, giving the P Papa and Mark Briscoe the win, and Aubrey also gets to celebrate. Now, our main event features Bandito versus Konosuke Takeshita. You all know that this match is going to be great because we all see how great and athletic these guys are going. Now, of course, Don Cal is saying that Takeshita is in another level than Bandito. Well, that may be true, but Bandito is a different type of breed. We all seen how a wrestler of his size can pick up a guy bigger than him. So we have seen it time and time again. But there was a moment that Don Callis was a bit more worried about how this match was going. But however, it was a knee strike by Takeshita to put away Bandito, giving him the win. So I think that's it for AEW Rampage. Uh, don't forget, we do have the AEW Collision coming up, and I can't wait to see that. So I think that's pretty much it for now. So let's move on to our last and final review, and that is going to be NXT Level Up. Okay, so who levels up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up? So let's find out. Our first match, we have Electra Lopez and Lola Vice teaming up. They take on Danny Palmer and Kalani Jordan. Now, keep in mind, this is a very interesting matchup. Now, we know in recently, both Lopez and Vice have teamed up in the past. Now, recently on NXT, um, Vice told uh, Lopez that she doesn't trust none of the other girls in the locker room. However... She did say that she does like Lopez. And of course, Lopez really likes her too. So they are now becoming a force to be reckoned with. But however, the dynamic between Palmer and Jordan, it's a little different. Now, they both have similar backgrounds. They're very athletic um, in their own right. But however, their teamwork will be put to the test against a team that has already have tag team experience before together. So that sets it up. But however, it was, of course, Electro Lopez with the double chokes uh, sitting down. With the sitting down choke bomb onto Jordan to pick up the win while Vice takes care of Palmer outside, giving the opportunity for Lopez to do her move, finishing off Jordan and giving herself and Vice the win. Now, our next interview is a very interesting one, which was. Now, keep in mind, as you know, uh, Shanning Stacks Lorenzo has been determined to find out who is the rat that ratted out on Tony D'Angelo. However, the person he right now uh, decided to call out the rat is none other than the so-called Big Body Javi. Now, Javi said he has nothing to do with what happened, but Shanning is determined to find out who ratted out Tony D'Angelo. That kind of sets it out. But however, that's where 
um, of course, stacks as the underboss has to determine who, who really was behind it. Now, we'll get to that match until the, the main event. However, our next match features Boa and the returning Bryson Montana. Now, uh, we haven't seen Bryson for some time, but Boa and Bryson, uh, the match was pretty good. You know, um, as I said, we had hardly see these two together, uh, seeing these two, in fact, in for a while. But now, but it was, of course, a spinning uh, back kick by Boa onto Montana, picking up the win. Now our big, but our main event, we have Stax taking on Big Body Javi. This was a very tough challenge because, as you know, Javi, he's not playing games, but he is not going to let Stax to call him out a rat until because he thinks that he has the right to do whatever he wants. But Stax, he's a very loyal uh, soldier to Tony D'Angelo. But I have to say, Stax really stepped up his game, knowing he's on his own for the time being until he finds a way to free Tony D'Angelo. And I have to say, he did pick up the good win when he applied a stomp, and it was over right from there. So I have to say, there was some good level ups on this one, but mostly I was more focused on the Electro Lopez and Lola Vice. I feel that they could be the ne the ones that should challenge for the NXT Women's titles and bring them back again from, you know, the unholy union or whatever they call themselves. But that's pretty much it we have. I believe it's time for some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news update. So this is what we have so far. Now, for a while, I've been reporting about the new all-women's promotion that will be debuting in October, Kinsun Women's Wrestling. Now, this was a promotion that was announced by a local podcaster here in San Diego, um, Eric Howard, who runs the Yoshi Pod. Um, he has been a very good, strong fan of the Yoshi wrestlers and, of course, um, he has been announcing this particular promotion recently. However, uh, it was announced for by him that the entire show has been sold out. You know, and he even mentioned this on his on his Twitter page. Uh, you guys should check it out. Go to the Yoshi Pod uh, Twitter page. It, it, you'll probably see it. But however, some interesting news. Prior before the he announced the sold out, he asked fan base. Do you guys like to see Yoshi Legends? And, of course, many fans would definitely want to see that. However, I don't know how he did it or who, how someone pulled this off, how, uh, however you want to say it. He actually brought two, there was announced two Yoshi Legends. One of them is Shigusa Nagayo. That's right, folks. Shigusa Nagayo, you may know her as the founder and promoter of Marvelous. She'll be coming to the U.S. for that in uh, LA on October 22nd. But the next one was the one where, holy shit, I cannot believe it's going to happen. They announced Kyoko Kimura. That's right, folks. Kyoko Kimura, you may know her as the late mother of the, of Hana Kimura. So I'm surprised of that. I wouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> if Mercedes Monet goes to say hi to her because we know how close she's been with Kimura. She's been, she's been keeping... Hana's memory alive. So I have to say that's a pretty good thing. Uh, some of you may ask me, how come I didn't get tickets? Well, thing is, I don't drive. And I don't know. Maybe things may not go my way if I plan to go. But we'll see what happens there. Now, more info coming up from other promotions. Uh, West Coast Pro has announced for the Cruel Summer event taking place on July 8th. We're going to have the bounty hunter, Brian Keith, taking on DDT star, uh, Mao. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I did mention earlier Braun Breaker. Now, if you guys remember what happened at um, a couple of months ago during WrestleCon, um, his father, Rick Steiner, was the subject of a, how do I say, a transphobic situation where he was being discriminating towards Giselle Shaw. Now, we all know what happened there. Rick Steiner is now banned from a, a, attending any of the WrestleCon events. But however, certain fans question 
how will this justify for Braun Breaker? Now, Braun mentioned on Fightful Select that this is not how he sees himself. He's nothing like his father. Now, I know some of you are going to say that's a load of horse crap. He, that he probably will, he's probably lying. Look, we just don't know exactly. I mean, look, Braun Breaker at this point, we all know he's at the top of his career. And he knows this is the last thing he needs is to ruin his career over his father's actions. Now, his father's actions were his own. Braun never mentioned anything like this. But we'll see how this plays out in the future. Because I know some of you would like to say that he is much like his father. But we'll see what happens then. Now, um, if you guys remember Delirious. Delirious, who, made, who was in Ring of Honor. As you know, when he during his time in Ring of Honor, he was the official book, booker of the promotion. However, it was announced that um, f that he will be has been signed with Impact Wrestling as a writer and a producer. We know he has stepped up the game on doing that. We know he had made appearances in um, Impact Wrestling before. Now it's still unclear whether it's he going to be wrestling or not. So we will just gotta wait and see. Now, finally, our last update here. Uh, first time ever in Prestige Wrestling for their upcoming show later on this on the 18th of June for Black Sunshine. We're going to have Killer Kelly taking on Tail Valkyrie. So this is the first time these two ever collided. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it, but uh, we'll see what happens till then. Um, I think that's pretty much it for our news updates, I believe. Yep, it is. So let's call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Um, coming up, we do have the Unagi Sayaka watch. We're going to talk about some recent matches that took place during the Fortune Dream 8 event that's been produced by none other than uh, Japanese wrestling legend uh, Kenta Kobashi and, of course, the much recent Marvelous show where she teams up with uh, Iz Aoki and takes on uh, her opponents. But we're also going to talk about something else, a very bit of surprise for every American fan base here. And of course, uh, I want to apologize to everyone. I did mention I was going to put a photo of Dark Unagi. Uh, my bad. I kind of forgot while I was editing the last uh, Unagi Sayaka watch. But this time, I'm going to do it for real. And I made a strong note on this thing uh, to attach it. So, uh, well, just to make it clear for everyone, let me put it up, uh, you know, right there, you know. That's where it is. So, so that's pretty much what we're going to do. And, of course, for our next episode, uh, we have more on the road to uh, the new road, the new Japan road. We're going to be reviewing about that. Uh, what else we're going to have? Oh, yeah, the Gambari Yoshi. Uh, definitely going to talk about, review that. And, of course, we cannot forget the debut of AEW Collision. I'm so excited for that. If there's any other wrestling shows that I want to put out, I'll let you guys know until then. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.